to your work sort of moves from um, what I would consider painting as a kind of a medium that is of less prominence than say drawing. Um, so we're moving from sort of a, a less of a state of prominence to a heightened state of prominence and then that, that, that mode of fabrication of the element in the gallery. Mm -hmm. And so I suppose the question, the question I, I would ask Chris is what does that um, that large group tolerance offer? You know, is there something, some opportunity that's afforded by that? Um, and for Patricia, the question would be, you know, how does that, did that way of working with really tight tolerances impact the way that you might think about painting, for example? Um, actually, it's about contingents, actually. Mm -hmm. What other, if, if we, some traditional drawing processes don't afford much contingency, the social, um, ecological, economic uh, dimensions. So I suppose, and I think I think every drawing has. It's just that some drawings accrued or preclude or even um, obfuscate some of those mm -hmm. to elevate some criteria to the surface, which I'm uncomfortable with. So I suppose uh, trying to acknowledge the contingent and the, and the, the, um, the latency of some of these systems, I think, allows us to return. You now, you notice me, I had to read what some of them were about, because I couldn't mm -hmm. figure it out from the drawing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the point of where is the drawing process occurring? And in many cases, it, process, it occurs as a conceptual dialogue between ground and hand or eye and brain. So the technology actually isn't, it was a useful disruptor mm -hmm. in offering those continuums to the platform to understand. <coughs> I mean, I thought the juxtaposition of two presentations worked really well. Um, uh, the thing that uh, I'm kind of questioning um, in your presentation is I mean, what, what is it you're learning from that process that you were involved in? Right? And, I, 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 and how much of that is, is something that you are controlling? There's nothing wrong with vagueness or, or um, being unsure about how things are going to develop. But you always are in control. It's up to you. To, to through drawing and through artistic skills to develop it and actually push it through to a conclusion and make a spark picture. But a piece of artwork, you're not, you're not depending on, on satellites or, or whatever um, in order for you to actually do that. You're in control. Sometimes you can draw without actually physically putting paper and pencil in, but there's a kind of mental process going on through in your own brain which allows you to facilitate that and, and to keep a hand on what it is you're doing. I suggest the reason why Hadid doesn't want you to see the engineering that's going into that is because there's an element of uncontrollability about it. I understand that, that they had to do a new computer program in order for you to actually understand how to put this thing together. Now, if your architectural ideas is, you know, the most elegant solution in the simplest means possible, right? That runs counter to that. That, to me, is counter architecture. So, so what, what, why she doesn't want you to see uh, the, 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 the structure is actually happening underneath because there's a, there's a degree of uncontrollability of the architects involved in this and engineers. They don't know how it's going to turn out. They're relying on the computer to allow you to do that. Now, you can argue whether that actually has, has uh, resulted in, in an extraordinary building. Uh, for me, the building is, exists as a piece of graphic design. It's not a piece of architecture. It's difficult for you to actually see the items on display. Uh, um, it's a kind of striking thing from looking from above. I, I can't understand why the, the you know, what the, the computer has actually brought to that should have made it a better Riverside Museum, right? Uh, so that's that element. The thing that I found interesting about your part of your presentation was when you compared the stuff that had been done in the shipyards to the stuff that's been done in the Riverside Museum, is that the guys who were making the ships in the shipyards were working in templates. They might have been working to the kind of same scale to that, but they had a craft about them, there was a craft they allowed to them. They knew exactly how to control every single aspect of that process. They weren't leaving anything at all to chance. And that's that, it's that element of chanceness, of, <coughs> of relying on the computer to help, help to develop something, which I think is a kind of suspect thing. I mean, I can contest it. <laughs> I'm sure you <laughs> would. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at your stuff and I'm, I'm suddenly realising my end of a I've never asked me to teach. <laughs> And probably never will. <laughs> uh, just, just a reflection, just or a question was that again, this is in Patricia's uh, distinctively different um, modes of drawing. Um, I don't know, is there, um, 
you think there is a difference between drawing and making a drawing? Making something that is a representation that's, um, again, an object that is a set of lines and actual process of drawing. Because I sense that in, in the case of, of, of the drawing with satellites, that brings me closer to this, um, to this, to con imagining it or conceptualizing it as making a drawing. If we say that, say, if we agree, if we agree that drawing is an embodied way of thinking, perhaps, then by drawing with with an iPhone, we obviously, I mean, the point of it is to lose the sense of uh, engagement with the object you're drawing to an extreme. I mean, you have absolutely yeah, no bodily feeling of what is coming but about. But you might not want to assume that you ever had that before. I think so. You might not want to assume that you ever had that before. iPhones are no different to different forms of charcoal or pencil, to be honest. Are they not? No. They, all they do is accentuate some of those differences, but I don't think you should assume that you knew what you were drawing to start with. I think you're drawing under conditions. You're all, you, the, 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 the assessment of Patricia's work by teachers is a form of jurisdiction, and everybody's drawing in a, in a jurisdictional context. You, Understanding how to mediate that either sometimes gets you a first class honours or a third, but it doesn't mean to say you understand what you're drawing. And I don't think just because it's digital, it has any difference to run. No, it's not about digitality, but about the distance between the body, of the physical body of, of the drawing person, and of the artifactual representation that is produced. Yeah, well. I, think, I think you're absolutely right about this, the distanciation between. I just don't know the point of that, whether we knew it. That if you, if you close, I don't think you can close the gap, that's what I'm saying. I don't think you should set up a fact that there's a gap which is closed, which is somehow to do with some form of drawing and something which is further apart. I don't think there's always a gap, that's what I'm saying. So I think you set up a yeah, like that. Any more questions on that? Um, yes? Am I allowed the second one, maybe?
produced while you're making it is the debris. And that's a photograph of one part of the debris, and you don't get to see the other parts, but they're shown as part of the exhibit. Okay. Yeah, um, I think absolutely acutely, it, it was almost, it is a conceit. I think the book is a conceit in some ways, um, which is a, a kind of a, forgive me, because I've, I've, I've kind of sterilised them. Um, and actually, it doesn't, the book doesn't document this extraordinary time process of jumping in a car and getting to Falkirk or finding a bloody bus in time. Or, I mean, that's why I think one of my favourites remains the, um, the measured time piece where someone walked um, a line and then used their watch to measure that next drawing step. So, yeah, I think that's the wrong button and it's a uh, well, hand up. Great. All right. Uh, we'll take more questions on that at the end. Uh, possibly we've got to move on now. Uh, so next up, we've got uh, Piotr Lesniak and Lisa Moffitt talking about inquiry slash representation. Um, okay. Thank yeah. you. Um, being invited to speak today prompted me to think a little bit about um, a, a disconnect that I sensed in my own work on reflecting on a project that I recently completed. These are some drawings of that project. It's a house in rural Canada that um, I've been working on for a number of years. And the perceived disconnect was that between uh, the way that I thought about drawing and used drawing as a student versus the way I found myself using drawing um, as in practice. Um, so if you flip to the next next drawing, this is a drawing that I made as, as a student, as a fifth year student, and um, what this this is this is sort of symptomatic of how I generally think of drawing, which is that drawing is a kind of uh, reflective tool. It's a tool that um, allows for iterative exploration. It's a tool that's a kind of um, uh, active reporting. So I, I never really thought of drawing as a student as um, presentation drawing or process drawing. In a way, all of my drawings were communications that ultimately led to um, an artifact that kind of crystallized a particular moment in time of thinking. Uh, next, next slide. Uh, on, on looking back at a number of the drawings that I made as a student, I uh, just now, um, in these past few days, I've noticed that there were two kinds of preoccupations that I think the drawings um, were exploring. The first is an, a, a preoccupation with projection, so what it is to move between uh, 2D and 3D modes of thinking, how drawing uh, and model making can be a kind of generative process, working between the two allows you to generate spatial ideas. And also how we might think of uh, perspective as a kind of projection in the sense that um, uh, our eyes receive the image of the world on, as a projection on uh, the lens of, of the eye. So projection as a way of thinking about how we occupy space, um, how we move through space, and how drawing might be a way for exploring um, uh, perspectival um, how, how we're situated within um, a, a, the environment. Next image. So this, this drawing um, is a kind of transition point, I'd say, to, and these are all ordered chronologically, um, to a different kind of preoccupation, which came about when the, the early stages of the project that I referred to in the first slide came about, which, which is the, the acquisition for um, I didn't acquire the site, but uh, when I was first introduced to the site for this house. So this lower image is a panorama uh, of the site, and this upper image um, starts to look at um, the construction of that panorama and how it might be impacted by this regulated geometry of, of the site, which is um, created by the, the crops, the rows of crops on the site. And basically what I became preoccupied with was that idea of trying to make sense of the field. So the, uh, rather than focusing on what it is to kind of occupy space, what it is to um, use drawing as a tool for kind of moving through um, contained space, I became interested in how drawings start to capture um, uh, open space or expansive space. So these drawings start to um, 
reflect an interest in some of the kind of temporal or ephemeral conditions on a site um, and how we start to qualify things that may be shifting or fleeting. Uh, in this case, one is looking at wind directionality, the other is looking at topographic conditions. Uh, this it won't be a surprise to any of my students right here. This drawing is about wind, uh, wind intensity, which is a, is a strange preoccupation that I have and I've unfortunately transmitted to a lot of you in this room. Um, so, on to the next. Uh, and then this drawing was for a competition and it's looking at a different kind of shifting ephemerality, which is the shifting shadow patterns uh, cast by these heliotropic um, mirrors on the site. I won't go into details about what this project was. So there were, uh, just to, to um, reiterate, there are these two kinds of preoccupations that were being explored through drawing. Um, in terms of how I saw drawing as inquiry, if we think of inquiry as um, a kind of augmentation of knowledge, certainly these were drawings as sort of thinking tools or, or ways of working through ideas. Uh, so when I found myself sort of preoccupied, one of the things I found difficult about starting this project was that I, I found that I couldn't really use drawing in the same way. So drawing as a way of sort of generating a spatial idea, um, I, I wasn't able to, to do that, I wasn't able to work in that way. Uh, I found myself um, immersed in this kind of world of drawing. And so drawing's representation I think becomes interesting here because the I think the question for me, what, what the word representation raises, and I was going to ask you, Chris, what you meant by representation, because you use the word as well. When I think of what the word representation it implies to kind of represent, so it implies that a drawing is a kind of stand-in for something else. Um, and I don't think I ever thought of any of the drawings up until this point as being a stand-in for something else, a, a stand-in for a kind of projected future of a building. Um, whereas these drawings, that was their role. I mean, they, their role was to accurately um, represent a kind of spatial future in a way. So that opens up a whole other set of problems. Um, next, next so the drawings, the, the world of drawing that I found myself in was that of uh, utter precision um, because the drawings became less about um, uh, spatial, generating kind of spatial form and more about um, uh, creating a kind of set of instructions for construction. So they were less about the drawing itself and more about this. So the drawing could not have any room for interpretation in a way. Whereas the earlier drawings were really about um, allowing a certain kind of slippage, a certain um, uh, illegibility that facilitated multiple readings. Uh, next image. These drawings are about getting it absolutely right so that that is done perfectly. Okay, and so there's a different kind of responsibility that's tied to, to these sorts of drawings. And they're for people like that, right? So, um, you know, this is the, one of the guys that um, was an electrician on the site. And I think it's really important to recognize that there's now all of a sudden there were all these mediators between me and this drawing. So there were people that were involved in interpreting those drawings, there were things being constructed from those drawings, and so there's a kind of distancing that's taking place between yourself and that artifact. So another example, again, just to reiterate that the drawing, the drawing becomes something of utter precision, and it's a kind of instruction manual. So I think I said, in a way, I. Um, this has this been sort of troubling me, and the intent of putting this talk together was to try to make sense of that tension. Um, and so this image is, uh, is a, I guess, a bit of a discovery. It was um, how I've been thinking about these drawings this, as a kind of artifact um, of over space. What's up? Hey, you know, it's okay. I can finish it too. Um, I've been thinking about the drawings as the final artifact, the instruction manual, so to be given to individual subcontractors. But in reality, this is what the drawing looked like. So this is the model space of that. This is basically the generator of all of those artifacts. And it's sort of interesting to look at this and to think about, I'm not gonna to try to answer this question, but I think there are parallels in a way between this world and the world of some of the earlier drawings. I wasn't really aware of it before, but certainly this is a kind of thinking space. Um, there is, There are um, multiple iterations of, of uh, ideas or sort of scalar juxtaposition image. Uh, there are moments of intensity of working and overworking. I think 
registered in the drawing, much in the same way that the hand-drawn drawings shown earlier uh, start to have these sort of hot spots of activity. Uh, so one, one way of sort of bringing things together is just that question, you know, is, there, is that distance so great between hand-drawn drawings and digital drawings? Um, and the other observation is just going back to these original questions or problems that I've been working through through the drawings and reflecting a bit about, this is another maybe an obvious thing, but it wasn't something I hadn't really, I hadn't, I hadn't really thought about this until putting this presentation together, that in fact, these ideas that had been explored and drawing very much bigger into this project. So they were sort of latent in the, in the development of this project. So the two ideas being moved to the next image. One about understanding optics and spatial perception. Uh, so this, this, this project was very much about calibrating views into and through the house, through strategic openings, um, both within and outside of the house as a way of um, uh, making uh, what was a very compressed space much more um, spatially expansive. And then the second um, issue being how we register the sort of shifting and fitting conditions of the landscape. And the architecture image does that. It's a static entity, but it creates a kind of datum in the landscape that allows for uh, occupational registration of those conditions. So, um, I suppose this image just sort of crystallizes or represents those two conditions um, in, in, uh, in, in a single set of images. These are just reflected views through uh, windows that have reflected. So they're images through and back from uh, outside of, of, the, of the building. But I suppose the, the point I, was, I wanted to make is that while I think I use drawing in a slightly different way, the construction drawings obviously have a different kind of role. Um, the kind of working through of ideas or the knowledge gained through the earlier drawings embedded a certain kind of understanding that eventually informed the work um, you know, years later. So that sort of attests to the kind of um, the, the potential for drawing to imbue or embed a kind of uh, a new kind of understanding, a new kind of knowledge base that can be applied architecturally uh, years, years later. So um, I think that's it. Um, 
but I think this is a highly problematic, uh, I mean, under this, this, this single um, typographic element, there's a very strong um, discussion and debate about, which is about the relationship of research um, and representation between architecture um, and its means of uh, inquiry, which for many is the understood as drawn um, and lines. Um, and would anything mark, does anything change when we change the direction of the world? Does it mean that um, any is any of the concepts, any of the terms, the practices that behind those is any different? I mean, we tend to understand uh, the title, uh, or sorry, the numbering of, of the drawing as one of five, as in the previous drawing. Um, does it mean that now we are past the presentation if it shows fifth, five slash two? Is it, is it more than, um, if, if one of five means a progress of 20% of presentation, does it mean that fifth, uh, five two uh, means um, that we pass the presentation? Of course, there's, these are um, questions um, regarding detail of, of this particular image, but the relationship between um, inquiry and representation is something that um, I think is very important for thinking about and within architecture as a discipline, uh, practice and project. Um, as you see, we can see the line in horizontal is a change anything and what, um, um, if a line may be understood as a division between um, one and the other, what is between the two lines, then what does a line with horizontal line? One, does it mean that the line links those? Um, does the relationship between the inquiry and representation then um, is represented differently if, if lines are at different directions? Um, that's, that's the question that the directionality of my mind is something that I'd like to um, draw your attention at this drawing. Um, and I must uh, resort here to um, a great inspiration of my um, MSc by research thesis, Paul Carter, who argued that, uh, or provoked us for the statement that we belong to two different, uh, two tribes separated by this great divide. And depending on which land of training we, um, we grew up on, um, we tend to see the world differently and we have very different agendas for it. Um, many of those, many of us gathered here probably belong to the um, tribe of those who think in pictures, diagrams, and um, those who draw, line, draw with lines of geometrical figures. Um, but those of us who have been uh, engaged with research might have noticed that uh, largely academic world, thought, philosophy and many other disciplines are largely reliant on drawing the chains of argumentation and narration. And the division, although Carter shows it as um, quite a definite one, um, you know, as, a, as a provocation, some of the lines, when looked at very closely, um, are not as simple. Um, a simple line that divides one and the other, research um, and representation, or architecture and drawing, may in fact um, perhaps be seen as something that is a lot more complex, and as a more complex field where um, there are lines perpendicular to the um, to the um, to the concepts and lines that make uh, the relationship a lot more complex and productive. Um, I'd like to bring your attention now to a very standard drawing. This drawing um, uh, originally comes um, from an Eastern European city, from Warsaw, but its convention, the convention um, of it is, is probably familiar to most of you. Um, it's an architectural survey, a northern survey equivalent sort of plan, uh, where every, none of the line is inconsequential. Each of them represents something very specific and pertinent to uh, the building process. 
And of course, it is made in a very specific convention and in a very specific context and for a very specific purpose. Um, there are many informations that this drawing does not include, uh, that omits and meets out completely. And my question I suppose here is how do we show that that is invisible on this kind of drawing, on this kind of map? <clears throat> and one way of doing this is um, perhaps the hand drawing, or which um, demands certain attention as presence in a particular place and building, I believe, um, a certain relationship with, with the place and, um, and the city around you. Um, but apart from certain aesthetic value, what, um, where are the lines? What sort of lines does one need in order to create a drawing like this? And as opposed to the first drawing you saw, many lines on this drawing seem to be um, non-representative. Um, unlike in the map, um, none of this line represents, or at least some of this line does, do not represent what is material and what is plainly visible. Uh, with the photographs, rather um, they they seem to accumulate um, something that Paul Carter calls a uh, um, discursive errancy of a line. Now, if each line is extremely difficult to forge, uh, copying being one of the um, major issues of, of drawing and uh, copyright being one of the major issues of um, of drawing and architectural practice. Um, if forging or imitating one line is very difficult, then how difficult it is to imitate or in some other ways uh, reproduce or represent each of those lines. Eight minutes. How many? Two minutes left. Two minutes left. Thank you. Um, the drawing that I'm showing you now um, is um, trying to um, show certain spatial uh, history that um, in his uh, call for uh, richer drawing practice Paul, Paul Carter is calling for. Um, as opposed to the previous two drawings, this one is an architectural design. It's a proposal, a speculative proposal for, uh, for, a, um, for a building which um, addresses a destroyed part of the city. Um, here, the um, old uh, the, the part of urban fabric that was destroyed in order to make space for a monumental um, um, monumental building in the center of Warsaw, in this case, um, the <coughs> non-existent now pre-war uh, urban fabric is being folded around um, the this, this very structure that obliterated this urban fabric. And perhaps through this sort of drawing, this what my intention was to preserve some of that spatial history, to create a drawing which is perhaps rich, enriched with, um, with special history of, of the city, uh, as well as of the process, which, um, as you see, accumulates <coughs> through um, the process of working with the drawing, folding it over and over again, um, densifying the lines. It densifies the certain significance um, and the dispersive errancy that I was talking about earlier. And perhaps a question for the end is whether drawing, the new kind of, the different kind of way of drawing, could be understood as literally drawing together um, accumulating of the dispersive errancy of lines and concepts.
Again, I'd like to open it uh, for any questions to the panel or from the audience. Very, very intelligent foundation of both parts. Um, I could use that copy as well, actually, because that's something that we hadn't been until that moment of copy. Um, um, if you just want to unpack that a little bit, because I think that's quite interesting, eh? um, in terms of copyright, as well as permissions and, and some of the practices of the digital, that you can copy and paste, um, theft, and I guess it just sounded interesting. I'd be unpacking a little bit more, because it sounds very interesting and challenging question. Um, well, copying or copying of lines is actually something that um, I wish I'd had the time to, to present here as well. Because in one of my drawing exercises, I've, I've, uh, I've come across this task issue by um, visiting um, a Dürer, Albert Dürer's exhibition in the Royal Scottish, um, or sorry, the Galleries of Scotland, uh, when I wasn't allowed to copy the, the lines you know, taking a photograph but I was allowed to copy the lines by hand drawing, which, which is what I did. Um, and it's interesting in the way, um, because the, the, very, the very foundation of the exhibition was about um, copyright breach. The exhibition does not show the, um, the prints only, the prints only, but juxtaposes them with illegitimate copies made by his contemporaries and people um, slightly later, who basically forgeries. Um, and it, uh, this brought me to, to the, this brought my attention to the very to the issue to the very issue of authenticity of authorship. And um, I mean, can we still call a line that was made from Dürer's print? Um, well, well after his death, can we still call, call it, you know, Dürer's lines? Or can we call them Dürer's lines in the very first place, even though they were made using a printing machine? And he was the only one, it was only, I mean, his authorship is in the very, um, the, the, the material surface that, 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 that multiplies them. Mm -hmm. um, photo, yes. <laughs> um, now, I, I, I have no clue whether I answer the questions. Um, but um, I think drawing um, and, and authorship of the, of the line is, is something very problematic, and especially in an architectural world, which ultimately relies on producing copies, multiple copies of some drawings in order to, to facilitate some, something uh, material to be, to be produced. This, this issue of authorship of the line is especially problematic. Thank you. 
incredibly difficult to do. To commit yourself to something, to put yourself in a piece of paper, it's so easy to do a computer generated line. You don't even have to be in the same room to do it. But what you're doing through there is, is obviously the exploration of architecture, but also asking yourself, can this piece of architecture, this structure I'm creating, exist in the built sense? Right? And I, I know from looking at the various elements of that drawing that you investigate not only the plan and the section, but how is this going to be constructed? Uh, and I remember, I, I remember I was teaching at the Bauhaus last year in this, school, this brilliant school of architecture in Germany. And uh, every single student presentation work that I saw was just uber, uber CGI after uber, uber CGI. I mean, it was tears rolling down my eye. There wasn't a single drawing in this whole great school of architecture. And there was this guy who was up for the final prize, obviously a star student, who'd done this really quite interesting scheme. Again, it was a CGI. And I was asking, everybody was very impressed with it. I was only Scots architect and they've actually taught me this stuff. And I thought it was an impressive piece of work, but it would be much more impressive if I had a sense through his drawings that he knew how to construct it, he knew how to put it together. And his answer to me actually shocked me. He says, architecture is not like that now. Uh, the, the, a piece of architecture can exist in a concept sense, and he can then pass it further down the line. Uh, the technician or the architecture or the executive architect will help them out put them together. Now, that for me is a deterioration of what the architecture would do. Right? If you're artists, obviously, that's it's a, it's a, it's frankly a great call for the mother of all the arts. But we should also have an ability to know how the thing can exist as a piece of structure that keeps the rain off your head, that keeps the walls around you intact, that uh, exists also as something delightful. And a drawing like that um, conveys to me that this student had a sensibility to know all these things are really important in work. Um, so I, I, I congratulate you, you must be a very good student. This end is working happy. Meant to be a sort of this inquiry is about the process of, of, of coming up with the, the, the concept and then the, and the building forming and representation is about the, the instructions uh, at, uh, at the construction phase. But what, what I like the most is probably when you see that in model space and took that as a drawing, showing that the actual representation and all the drawing, 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 construction drawings that are essentially instructions can it, it's very much an, an Inquiry drawing as well, but it's something that's a, it's a process and want to see, but you, you very rarely zoom out of it because it's always about setting up new tabs and firing out new details, but when you actually zoom out and look at it as a whole, it's a, it's a sequence of exploration. Which I suppose really like. what's slightly problematic about that is that this realization is going to happen, but yeah. even less than four hours. I mean, so it's not something that I was sort of conscious of in the creation of the drawing, whereas, you know, the kind of immediacy of what it is to draw on a piece of paper that can't be rescaled, where layers can't be turned on and off, where you're, you're always confronted with the totality. Um, that's a very different kind of way of working than one where you have the option to sort of call them back and forth between multiple scales and you use it, you know, the, So it is an interesting artifact. It's interesting, interesting to reflect on the connections between those two worlds, but it's sort of something now that I, something that I can really reflect on now because it wasn't an Yes.
quite a bit of weed, was not an architectural degree, it was a research in cultural studies. So it was a research in cultural history of the city and how um, it's possible to inquire into it through architectural means of inquiry. Um, so, um, and I'm sort of saying it didactically, um, uh, uh, um, but what I, what I really mean uh, to, 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 um, uh, to point out is that, that the line uh, here is used really in an interesting way to inquire into the nature of representation. Um, uh, because it's, uh, um, um, I really enjoy the, um, uh, the uh, first discussion of the direction of line and the relationship between the inquiry and, and representation. Because we could also inquire with different modes of in representation. Uh, we can inquire into something with different modes of representation if we um, choose so or if we pay attention uh, to it. So, um, so, I mean, there are a number of questions, which sort of this leads me into a number of people in the panel, but I mean, I won't have time to cover it at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I suppose as a final disclaimer for this, uh, for this drawing is, um, well, perhaps an information that the drawing that, we, that the building that is um, at the very back of it um, has been, um, well, redundant, that doesn't really, really um, quite deliberately for, for a number of years, uh, because the, the street that it was taken from um, was planned to be extended and as a, as a result, the building would have been knocked down. And there's this, uh, I suppose, the intention and, 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 and the certain rhetoric um, um, content of, of, of the drawing was to emphasize the, 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 the strength of the forces, the choice of perspective, and focusing it very much on the drawing in the single perspective, and, and trying to convey a sense of um, the imminence and maybe certain forces um, within the city that, 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 uh, that resulted in its in its state, in its current condition. Is that an existing building or is yeah. that a, a part of a new architecture developing in that? Yeah. It's very much an existing building. It's a it's a typical tenement uh, which in the context of Warsaw means it's quite unique really. There are not very many of them left. Um, and, uh, and yes, it was uh, really ported up and it's, um, it was meant to be demolished. Uh, but if, if you were to, if I'm able to, to turn that off, I mean, you could draw that, couldn't you? Pardon? You could draw that. If I was to, if, I was to, if you were to turn that off and ask you to draw that, I would make a sketch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a trick question. Could you draw it? <laughs> no, I'd have to try it. Mean, suppose I would draw something. Yeah, okay, all right. right. <laughs> Well, the reason I mean, I've been with, with Derry Architect students walking around Amsterdam and Rotterdam and all those places, every single one of them taking a multitude of digital images, having really no idea what it is they're photographing or why they're photographing it, just because they think that they're architecture students and that kind of thing they do. I mean, the reason why you, you don't really build anything at any particular moment until you're in your 50s as an architect, until you have 25 years' experience is is it takes you a long time to grab a kind of catalogue of architectural elements and things in your brain before you have the experience to actually commit yourself to doing a major piece of work. Right? I know again through my own experience and that is the people who sit down and draw something rather than rely on digital imagery will take the time to actually draw and get a sketchbook out uh, and draw something. That penetrates the brain in a much more memorable and, and less easily forgetful way than actually taking a photograph does. Right. Well, I think, I think this, is, this seems to be just about drawing a, a pen and a pencil or charcoal, whereas I think with Matricia's work we were looking, talking about the landscape and then you were abstracting the landscape. That's, and for those of our colleges and the models, and it was like, it's a very intuitive way of responding to, to it, and I just think there's more to it than just the line drawing. Um, but the thing is, when you do that, you have to have embodied what it is you're abstracting first. You know, mm -hmm. for me, Riverside, I couldn't have done any of that work had I not almost swallowed it down with making those drawings. I felt as though, you know, oh, okay, maybe I can't repeat a drawing. I'm not very good at mm -hmm. that kind of draftsman skill. But what I can sort of out afterwards, like I'm a conduit for it, once you eat it, through your hand, um, you're a conduit for something else. Yeah, you know, it's a 
take your word of it. It is. It's the way you take it.